Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Ahabit tafillah, we're going to start a series uh, of basic fiqh and we'll talk about the basic fiqh of tahara, purification, and the fiqh of salat. You know, basic fiqh and basic tahara that every Muslim needs to know because the ilm that's wajib is the knowledge that every Muslim needs to act upon. That means it's wajib. That means it's an obligation. The Prophet ﷺ said, Talib al-ilm faridatun ala kulli muslim wa muslima. That seeking knowledge is an obligation on every Muslim male and female. That doesn't mean everyone has to be a scholar, no. It means everyone needs the basic knowledge the, uh, of the halal and the haram and how to practice their religion, how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it's very important that we have some insight into fiqh. And fiqh, it means, in the Arabic language, it means fahim, which means uh, to understand. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, which is a very important uh, hadith that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for us to know and understand the importance of understanding a religion. And it shows that it's an act of ibadah. And it shows that it is uh, a means to come closer to Allah and that Allah loves knowledge, loves that you seek Islamic knowledge. Uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, May yarad Allah bihi khayran yafaqofidin. Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him understanding of the religion. He gives him fiqh fiddin, understanding of the religion. So this, when we talk about fiqh, here the fiqh of ibadat, the fiqh of worship, this means those actions, more or less, of how to worship Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we talk about fiqh and ibadat, we're talking about things like like the arkan al-Islam, you know, uh, except for the shahada, things like the uh, like prayer, like we're talking about fiqh al-Tahara and fiqh al-Salat, and we're talking about uh, you know, fasting Ramadan, we're talking about making Hajj, we're talking about paying Zakat. All of those uh, acts, those arkan al Islam, those pillars of Islam, they fall under fiqh al ibadat, fiqh of worship. So, this is how to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, and how, how to do that, the procedure for how to do that, and understanding that. So, when we talk about the fiqh of salat, the first thing we want to talk about is the conditions for prayer, shurut of salat. Uh, because salat is the way that, of course, that we come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Salat is wajib. It's a arkan, it's a pillar of Islam, meaning, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, man taraka salat faqad kafara. Whoever leaves the prayer has disbelieved. So that shows us how important that pillar of Islam is and why we have to study how to make Salat properly. When you pray, that is your means for coming close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is your means for communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is your direct communication with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your prayer. So it's very important to make your prayer strong, to know how to pray properly, uh, know the obligatory actions of the prayer, the wajibat of the prayer, the conditions of the prayer, which we're about to go over, and, you know, in general, how to pray and how to have that khushur, how to come close to Allah, how to be concentrating on your ibadah. Um, so that that is very important. And the Sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala, anu majma'in, they used to, out of all the arkan, aside from the shahada, shahadatain, that the one that they regarded, that if a person left it, they regarded them as a disbeliever, uh, you know, or as a hypocrite, was the Salat. Meaning that if someone didn't, uh, you know, make Hajj, or they didn't, they failed to pay the Zakat, they, the Sahaba, were in agreement on that the one who left the prayer was... Uh, you know, has, you know, this is the greatest form of hypocrisy. And this is the greatest form of, you know, they regarded this as 
like kofar. So this is why it, it's so important to pray properly and establish the prayer. So keeping it brief, uh, the first thing we need to talk about are the shurut, shurut to salat, the conditions of the prayer. So there are nine conditions of the prayer according to some of the ulama, and you know the ulama they have their different ways of classifying things, but the way we'll study it is basically more or less from the madhab of Imam Ahmed the Hanbali madhab, which is more what my background as far as my limited training is in that madhab. So when we talk about the shurut al salat, the shurut al salat, the conditions for prayer mean that th that is uh, something that must be in place before the, the act of worship. When you talk about shuruq, this word sh uh, shart or shuruq, shart is uh, the, the uh, mufrid or the singular and shuruq is plural. Shuruq is plural. Okay, and, uh, when we talk about the Arabic language. And so when we talk about a shart, this is something that is a precondition for an act of worship. The precondition for something means that you have to do it before you do it. These, these things need to be in place before you pray. If we talk about the shuru to salat, that means these are the conditions, the things that have to be in place before salat. If we talk about the shuru to zakat, that means those are the things that have to be in place before zakat becomes wajib for you or the shurut al-hajj, or whatever, shurut al-jihad. Jihad is from mu'amalat, that is not, we don't say uh, fiqh ibadat. <coughs> we talk about jihad <coughs> as fiqh <coughs> of mu'amalat. <coughs> These are the, <coughs> the, <coughs> the fiqh of the mu'amalat, of like business transactions. So, the conditions, the shurut, as we mentioned, uh, and, and we mentioned fiqh al-ibadat, fiqh al-mu'amalat, fiqh uh, al-mu'amalat. This has to do with the fiqh of uh, social transactions, okay? The fiqh of how, how to do social transactions, like business. You know, we call that kitab al you know, studying about how to do business transactions, what's what's riba and what's not, and things like this. Uh, <clears throat> you have the fiqh of jihad, as we mentioned. You have the fiqh of nikah, uh, the fiqh of getting married, and the fiqh of divorce. All of this requires fiqh, and that's all requires understanding of the religion, and they have different rulings, and so each one, they fall into their different, uh, under different categories. Fiqh al-ibadat, and fiqh al-mu'amalat. Fiqh al-ibadat is what we're going to concentrate on, mainly just, uh, a, you know, something simple as far as uh, tahara, purification, <coughs> and uh, salat. So, uh, in general, as we mentioned, uh, the sh a shart, or a condition, is something that is before the act of ibadah, and it must continue during the act of ibadah. So that's very important. It's not just, it doesn't mean that, okay, so now you, you have your purification, you did your tahara, but then you break your tahara after you begin to pray. Well, that invalidates your salat. That makes your salat batin. Because the Prophet said, La yaqbalallahu salata ahadikum ida ahdatha hatta yatawaddu. That Allah does not accept <coughs> your the prayer of any one of you until, uh, if he has a hadith, and we'll talk about that uh, more in depth. If he has a hadith, like he passes gas, he urinates, he goes, does number two, or defecates, or for the woman, she has uh, menstruation, or she has uh, postpartum bleeding. Uh, all of that is considered hadith, and we'll talk a little bit of, we'll talk in depth, more in depth about Hadith al-Akbar or Hadith al-Asgar, the, the great, the bigger uh, impurities and the major impurities and the minor impurities. But for now, we just want to know that a condition, a condition must be throughout the, throughout the act of worship. So that means the condition, you begin with the condition, 
and then it continues throughout the act of worship. So we said there's nine conditions for prayer. Nine conditions for prayer. <clears throat> so uh, from amongst those conditions, we could say that these conditions for Salat, that means they have to, they're before the prayer and they're during the prayer, all throughout the prayer, they continue. These conditions, <clears throat> as some of the ulama mentioned, are nine. Okay? And they can be divided, as we divided here, to prayer conditions and conditions for the actual worshiper. Okay? We'll talk about the prayer conditions first. The prayer conditions... First, uh, probably the most monastic or the best way to say would be intention. That you have to have intention because all ibadah must have intention. The Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith of uh, Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala an qad, Samaitu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul inna ma'amala bin yad wa inna mali kulli imrin wa inna mali kulli imrin minawa fa man kana hijjudu allahi wa rasulihi this hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith in which the Prophet said, very actions are tied to the intentions. That shows us why this is a why it's so important. Intention. Because that uh, your action, salat is an action. Okay, it has the actions of the heart and it has actions of the limbs. And it has actions of the tongues. In fact, in Salat, you have all the actions of the Iman. Because Iman is a qawla lisan, it's a statement of the tongue, so that's dhikr, that's the shahada. It is a al uh, amal bijawarih, it is deeds on the limbs, so you're making ruku, or you're making sujood, so you're making prostration, you're making, you know, uh, sujood, uh, uh, <coughs> ruku. And it is uh, also the actions of the heart, and that's the intention. In a ma'am of binyat, very actions are tied to the intentions. Everyone should get that for which he intended. Therefore, he who migrates for Allah and his messenger, then he's migrated for Allah and his messenger. And he who migrates to take some woman in marriage or to gain some worldly gain, then they will get that for which they intended. Meaning they, they lose out. Because the highest, the reason you migrate, make hijrah, or the best hijra, the one that's an act of ibadah, is going is making hijra for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, leaving maybe the land of disbelief to the land of belief, the land of bid'ah to the land of sunnah, or making hijra from your sins, just running from your sins, putting a block, having taqwa, and putting your uh, iman in front of, uh, to block the sins, you know, putting a barrier between you and the hellfire. But, so, the first condition we want to talk about is the intention. You must have intention for your prayer, as we mentioned, and we gave the adilla for any action, okay? That you must have intention when you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the second condition is what we're going to talk a little more in depth about in the next lesson is purification, purifying yourself. You must make, as we mentioned, you must make wudu, or you make must make ghusl, or in some situations, it's tayammum, instead of the uh, wudu, okay? Or instead of the ghusl, depends on the, the hal, and we'll talk about that as well more in depth. Because these are very important things, so that way we know these very important acts of ibadah, how to worship Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. So, we said intention is our first condition. Uh, regarding the prayer condition, this is for the prayer. You need to have intention. You need to have purification, okay? Uh, you need to pray in the time, when it's time for prayer. When the time comes in, uh, then that means the walk, the prayer time has begun until the prayer time ends. Okay? So that is the time for prayer. And then there's a time when it's, when it's best to pray, and then there's a time when it's, uh, uh, you know, you must pray, and it, and, and it, it's, it's um, if you, you're in a dangerous time, meaning you're almost missing the prayer, you need to pray at that time. That means if you miss the beginning of the time for prayer, it's almost time for the other salat to come in. Okay? So anyway, the first intention we, is intention, the second purification, the third, we said, prayer time. The fourth prayer condition 
is covering. You have to sit there on Aura. Okay? And for the men, we'll talk about that more in depth. That it is for it is from the surah, it's from the uh, the, the belly button to the tatarukba, you know, uh, under the knee. And for the women, of course, they need to cover themselves uh, with the shari uh, covering, right? And then we have facing the qibla, so we have to face the qibla when we pray, okay? And that's yeah. So these are the. Uh, prayer conditions. As far as the conditions for the worshiper, so some kind of they don't really break it down like this, but we're just gonna do this as uh, the Sheikh mentioned in his taqseem here, uh, that the conditions for the worshiper, so this has this applies to the person who's going to pray. They have to be a Muslim. So prayer is not accepted from a disbeliever. Absolutely not. It's not going to be it's not going to be accepted by Allah Azza wa Jal. They are not uh, practicing the shara of Allah, and it's not wajib upon them according to some of the ulama. So they must be a Muslim. Okay, If someone is a Buddhist, they can't pray the Muslim salat and have it accepted. Okay, Allah is not going to accept it because they they don't have uh, they don't have Islam. They don't have the shahada tank. But uh, also, a person must have intellect. They must be sound in mind. So a person who is either insane or a person who is uh, unconscious, okay, all of these uh, make it so, you know, this person is not responsible for prayer. So you must have intellect. You must know what you're doing. Okay, you must have, you know what you're doing. But someone who's a little bit, who's off quite a bit, and they don't really know what they're doing, and they're praying. You know, some, sometimes some people are like this. You see that they come to the masjid still, but they don't know. They start playing in the salat. Maybe he's an older guy, but maybe he is. Uh, he is uh, mentally uh, impaired. Okay, so he is not. He's not really responsible for prayer. He's playing in the prayer, and he's looking around, and maybe he walks around, and maybe talks, and then he comes back, and you know, this person is not. Uh, depending on their level of impairment, they are not responsible because they their intellect. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, Rufiya aklam ala thalatha. The Prophet Sallallahu said, the prayer is, uh, uh, the, the qalam, the pen is, um, the pen is lifted on three. And he mentioned the one who's sleeping until they wake, the one who is, uh, uh, who is, who is um, maj, majnun or who is who is mentally impaired until they gain their consciousness. The one who is, uh, did I, I think I said sleep. Okay, the one who sleep, the one who is unconscious, uh, and and al balu, you know, and the one who is immature until they become mature. Okay, so that lets us know. That is evidence right there for in intellect and maturity. That hadith shows us that a person must have intellectual capacity and they must be mature. Okay? And the last condition that we want to talk about, the condition for the worshiper, which wraps up all these conditions, is it is the last one which is exclusively for women. That it becomes wajib upon the woman to pray. Uh, and this condition is that she does not have, she's not on her menses. If she's on her menses, menses, her period, it is haram for her to pray. Okay, it's haram. And not and or her uh, postpartum bleeding. You know, after a childbirth. Okay, nifas. So this is height o nifas. So uh, this is for women, obviously exclusively that during that time they uh, it's impermissible for them to pray and they are not responsible for the prayer at that time so that's why it's considered a condition and a condition for the worshiper especially the obviously for the female worshiper so these are the conditions for prayer and just for <clears throat> brief so we see intention purification the prayer time 
to cover sitter of awrah, cover your the things that need to be covered for the prayer, facing the direction of the Kaaba in general. Unless you're right there where you can see the Kaaba, then you have to face exactly the Kaaba. Uh, <clears throat> also, that the condition for the worshiper that they have to have Islam, they have to be Muslim, they have to have their intellectual capacity, they have to be mature, and for women that they should not have. Uh, they should not be under menstruation or postpartum bleeding and until the next sitting and we'll keep it very brief and have these sittings Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam